Hi, my name is Kelly Chappelle, and welcome to this video about 5 prime or 3 prime end labeling of DNA. This video is made for MCDB 427, which is molecular biology at the University of Michigan. So to introduce this, there are three ways to label DNA. The first is by introducing an alpha-32 um, phosphate DNTP, usually DATP, in a DNA synthesis reaction, and that results in labeled DNA that's labeled throughout. Then there are two ways of labeling ends, and we know that DNA has two ends, a 5' prime end or a 3' prime end, so we can label either the 5' prime end or the 3' prime end of that DNA, which I've shown here, where the red shows the radioactive label, um, and where that would be. And this is what we're going to focus on in this video. Um, this shows up, this method shows up in quite a few experiments, um, and quite a few methods, including S4 mapping, footprinting, and a bunch of others, so the fun never ends. Let's get started. The first type of end labeling is 5' prime end labeling, and this is how it works. So imagine you have a piece of DNA, and you want a subsection of this DNA to be labeled on the 5' prime end. Let's zoom in on a little part of this DNA, and we've got, in, in, this, in this section of this longer piece of DNA, we've got two BAMH1 sites and a SAL site. And when you select the part, uh, the section of DNA that you want a 5' prime end label, it doesn't matter what restriction enzyme you use. It doesn't matter um, whether that restriction enzyme creates blunt ends, 5' prime, or 3' prime overhangs. So the first thing we want to do is actually isolate this fragment um, with using BAM H1, these two BAM H1 sites. So I'm going to cut with BAM H1, and it's going to produce this fragment. Okay, and this fragment, remember, also still contains the cell one site. So we have this fragment, and the next thing we want to do, and, and one thing that you should note about this fragment is that we have a phosphate, we have one phosphate at each 5' prime end. And what we want to do is replace this unlabeled phosphate with one that is radioactive. That's how we label the 5' prime end. And so the first thing we need to do in order to replace the phosphate is to remove it in the first place. And the, the way that we do this is by using an enzyme called alkaline phosphatase. Alkaline. And actually, I'm sorry, it's alkaline with an I here. Alkaline phosphatase. So what this does is this removes these terminal phosphates on 5' prime end. The next thing we want to do is replace these phosphates with something that is radioactive. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, use a polynucleotide kinase. Polynucleotide kinase plus radioactive ATP. So this is going to be a gamma label 32 phosphorus ATP. You can see this, this phosphate group here at the end is gamma labeled and it's radioactive. So gamma labeled 32 phosphate ATP. And what that will do, what the polynucleotide kinase will do, is add these phosphates here to these five prime ends, producing a product that looks like this, where we have these radioactive phosphates here on both five prime ends. There we go, just like that. And now we have our labeled five prime ends, but now we have a problem because we have DNA that's labeled at both five prime ends, and usually we just want one. And so this is where this other restriction enzyme site, the cell one site, comes in. I've just redrawn this here with dots instead of these phosphates, um, just for easier to look at, a little bit easier to look at. So let's see. So we've got our cell one site here, and so next what we want to do is cut with cell one, and what that allows us to now have is two fragments, each of which is labeled on one five prime end. And then what we can do is we can separate out these guys by running them on a gel, by running them on a gel like this, and they'll run a different, they'll run a different, um, a different, they'll, they'll run differently on the gel, such that we can separate out this guy from this guy. And so we can purify the one that we want, and there we go, we've got five prime unlabeled DNA. Now if we want single-stranded DNA, all you have to do is denature it afterwards. If you want double-stranded DNA, that's what you've got here. Now let's talk about what happens when we do three prime unlabeling. Three prime unlabeling. So again, you're starting out with your DNA, and here's a subsection of that DNA that's um, that's flanked by two HIND3 sites and a ZO, and a, I wrote ZO3, but really it should just be ZO1. Silly me. And a ZO1. And the thing that's important and, a, and an important distinction between 5' prime and 3' prime end labeling is that 5' prime end labeling, it doesn't matter what these restriction enzymes, or what restriction enzyme sites you choose, but in this case, in 3' prime end labeling, you must choose a restriction enzyme that leaves 5' prime overhangs like HIN3. So what we're going to do is cut with HIN3 to isolate this to isolate this fragment. 
And we're going to get something that looks like this with these five prime overhangs. I've redrawn it over here because I want to point out why these five prime overhangs are necessary. It's because the five prime overhangs function as a template for a small DNA synthesis reaction we're going to do on the three prime end. This is how we make the three prime end radioactive. So the five prime ends here, these become the templates, and then now we have this OH on the three prime ends. These are three prime ends that we can use for a DNA synthesis reaction. Now, how do we actually conduct the DNA synthesis reaction? The first thing we have to do is we have to use DNA polymerase, right? DNA polymerase. And we're not using just any DNA polymerase. We're actually using a clonal fragment. A clonal fragment. And that's just a fragment. And that's just a part of DNA polymerase that still has the DNA polymerase activity, except for it lacks the 5' prime to 3' prime axonuclease activity that proofreading capability. And of course, when we have DNA polymerase, we need something that DNA polymerase, DNTPs, that DNA polymerase can use to extend this three prime end onto the template, um, complementary to the template. And in order to do that, we have to use DNTPs. And the important thing about DNTPs is that you add at least one that is radioactive. And it can't just be any DNTP. It has to be a DNTP that is complementary to one base in the template. So usually this is um, alpha label 32P DATP. So plus 32P ATP. And so the 32P makes it radioactive. And then of course, for the rest of the synthesis to occur, we need to make sure that we include all the other NTPs that are complementary. So, okay, so T goes with A, C means that we need to add a DGTP, G means we need to add a DCTP, and then th this other A means we need to add a DTTP. And these don't have to be radioactive. So we add these two things together, we get our synthesis, right, so this is the newly synthesized strand against these template strands here on the 5' prime ends, and you see we've integrated these A's, these radioactive A's into there, which results in labeled 3' prime ends, right, which I've shown over here, where um, this is just a little zoomed in version of this. And again, we have the same problem, where now we have two labeled 3' prime ends, we only want one labeled 3' prime end, and that's why this ZO site comes into play. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut with ZO1, and that'll result in two fragments of different sizes uh, that are labeled on the respective three prime ends. We can run this out on a gel to separate them, and then we can choose which one we want to purify to use in whatever we're whatever we're going to be using our three prime end labeled DNA for. And again, like five prime um, end labeling, uh, you can either use a double stranded version, which would be something that you probably use for DNA footprinting. Or you can use a single-stranded version, which is what you use for S1 mapping. So that to get a single-stranded version, you just denature this after you purify it on a gel. I hope this video is helpful, and it's a good refresher for understanding uh, how to do 5' or 3' end labeling.